Hello and welcome everybody to another Outlaws of Thunder Junction draft. I'm Paul Chion and today we are sitting at Diamond 3 with uh, one pip to go to hit Diamond 2. So well on our way to trying to escape Diamond and hitting of course Mythic so we can continue our climb. Some of our rivals are already Mythic. I believe Ikin is already Mythic too because Ikin is a beast. But uh, we will try our best here to, uh, to catch all the people ahead of us. Remember, it's a marathon, not a race. Unless you're Ekin, in which case, it's both. Now, before this draft fires, I did want to say, if you've enjoyed this content and wanted to support the channel in another way, I do have a Patreon channel. The link to the Patreon is in the description below, and I do want to give a special shout out to all the current patrons. Thank you so much for your support, as it really does help me make this content on a daily basis. Now, we've had a bit of a rough streak. We've had a bit of a rough streak, I'm not gonna lie. We've been trying to science, uh, the science experiments have not been going well, I'm just going to say. And so let's, uh, let's just try to win for reals, all right? Let's see what happens when we try to win for reals, all right. So let's take a look at this pack. We have Nimble Brigand, which is a nice payoff card for the blue-black crime deck. There's Shoot the Sheriff, which is a fine removal spell. But there's an even better removal spell here in Buried in the Garden, and there's also Honest Rudstein. And honestly, the only gold-colored card that I don't mind taking first pick is a green one because you can splash. So now the question is, do I want Honest Rudstein or Buried in the Garden? And I think it's close, and I do think they're both very good, but I'm going to go with Buried in the Garden. I just think this is just too good of a removal spell. It's a removal spell that also ramps you and also acts as a potential fixer. I love me a Buried in the Garden. Passing some premium uncommons here. Eartha Joe as well. Honest Redstein, Shoot the Sheriff, and Nimble Brigand. But let's start things off here with the Buried in the Garden and see what's next. And now moving into this pack, we have Jace Reawakened, but I'm not the biggest fan of this card. I, th I think it's just okay. Given that we started with Buried in the Garden, I don't think I want to take this second pick. Uh, the cards I'm looking at here are Rattleback, Apothecary, Mystical Tether. I do have Tether higher. So it's really Tether versus Patient Naturalist for the green and white cards. And there's also a Vault Plunderer in this pack. I think the safest pick here is to just go with the Mystical Tether. Start things off really strong with two good removal spells. And uh, kind of take it from there. Bounding Faladar is also fine if you do end up in the green-white mounts deck. But uh, like I said... Happy enough with this start of Mystical Tether and Buried in the Garden. And now we have pack number three, which gives us Spinewoods Paladin and Slickshot Lockpicker as the two cards to really consider out of this pack. Now, you know me, I, den I generally try to avoid going blue. And if I do end up in blue, I like pairing it with black specifically. I dislike blue-white a lot. I basically just never want to draft blue-white. And so with what we have so far, I just don't think the Lockpicker is where I want to be. There's also the stock hour lock. Now we can end up in Bant, I guess, where we go blue, green, splash, white. But even in Bant, um, it's possible that I just like the Spine Witch Paladin more. So I'm just going to take the Paladin here just because it still keeps us within two colors. Uh, uh, these white cards are still highly splashable, but I'm going to take the Paladin here over the uh, Slickshot Lock Picker and kind of see where the next pack goes. And then now we have this pack, which has basically no green or white cards that I really like. I'm not a big fan of Outlaw Medic unless I am the black-white deck. In the black-white deck, I think it's fine. So I just think it's below replacement level. So I just don't need to take it here. So now we have the choice between a Soured Springs, which is a, uh, an okay desert. It doesn't go with the colors that we have now, but oftentimes you can splash black, etc. Or I can take a Desperate Bloodseeker if I wanted to move into black. But haven't been seeing a ton of black right now. So I do think this is a pretty good opportunity to spec on a desert here. Even though it's double off color, I can see a world where I can splash either blue or black. Again, I can also be base blue green or base black green splashing white. Um, so I'll take the Soured Springs here over the Desperate Bloodseeker. And then continue to see what the packs give us. Now we have a pack here with basically no playable cards or cards that I like playing. I don't like any of these red cards. I don't like these blue cards. I don't like these white cards. I will take Ambush Gigapede. I think it's the best card in this pack. But uh, black didn't seem especially open. So I don't know how much I want to take this uh, play, take and play this Ambush Gigapede. And then now we have this pack. It's another pack where there's a Desert and a Tumbleweed Rising as a consideration. I guess I'll just take another Soured Springs here. I'm not super high on Tumbleweed Rising. I think there are instances where it can be okay. But I think it's kind It's. I think I'd rather just have a second desert, honestly. So let's just take the Soured Springs here to kind of 
uh, allow us to potentially splash a second color a little bit better. And now we have this pack. This is a weird, weird draft. I, I don't really know where I need to be here. There is another Ambush Gigapede and a Bristle Pack Sentry out of this pack. Certainly not seeing a bunch of the good white cards, like none of the, the mount cards. All we saw was a uh, Garden and a Tether. So white might not be available. I am seeing some late Gigapedes. Black is pretty deep. Maybe we do end up with our trusty black green splash uh, white deck here. I will just take a Bristle Pack Sentry just because I don't have a low, th low drop. And we already have one Ambush Gigapede. So taking the Bristle Pack Sentry here for curve considerations. And then moving on. Now we have a bu Bucolic Ranch, which if I have a lot of mana ramp, I don't mind this so much. I, kinda, I don't really like Thornado very much. So I will spec on a Bucolic Ranch in case uh, it is a scry land that I'm interested in playing in my deck. Moving on here, we have Phantom Interference, which did table, um, but didn't see a whole lot of blue outside of that. I will take this Lush Oasis though, so we are going pretty deep here on Deserts. So this does open the door for us to maybe try to draft some kind of wild multicolor deck, just because I do seem to be having trouble finding what my lane should be. We're just taking a bunch of mana fixing and staying flexible, and just taking the most powerful cards that we see for now. And we have this pack. Maybe blue is open? I mean, not, not that Take the Fall is particularly good, but it is a way to commit crime. What does Endless Detour do? The owner of target spell non-land permanent or tar card in a graveyard puts it on the top of or bot. So it's just like a bounce spell. I'm going to take Take the Fall. If I end up drafting some kind of a crime deck or blue ends up being super open, maybe we can uh, shift into blue potentially. But man, this is a... I'm not going to lie, this is a bit of a rough draft so far. I just, there's just nothing in these packs that I really want. I think overall it was just a fairly weak pack. I'll take a Wingsmith just to have a creature, I guess, but certainly not a creature that I want. I really dislike Bovine Intervention as a removal spell, so we're going to need a lot of help here. We're going to need a lot of help. We need some rares. We need some cards that we can splash. We'll see. I don't even know what my second color is going to be. I feel like I want to be base green. We could be white, we could be splashing white, we'll see. All right, this pack has Avon Interrupter, which is pretty cool, but it's double white. Unlicensed Hearse is a cool way to commit crimes every turn, but not necessarily always great. Uh, definitely looking to shore up the earlier part of my mana curve. There's Aloe Alchemist and Rambling Possum, both of which are good. I feel like I wanna be green, even though it didn't seem super open, we just have the most green cards here. So I'll take the Aloe Alchemist here as just a very, very good two drop to play in my deck and move on from here. And now there's a Seraphic Steed, okay. Okay, I'm gonna take Seraphic Steed. Now, white wasn't super open, but I'm, I'm not opposed, I've splashed Seraphic Steed in the past. It is a premium card and has the highest upside here. So I will take that, noting that there's also Hard Bristle Bandit, Patient Naturalist, and Back for More as all solid cards. I would probably take either Patient Naturalist or Back for More. I do rank Hard Bristle Bandit lower than the other two, but Gonna take the Seraphic Steed here, at least gives us some direction. Okay, and now we're getting some good cards in this pack. Good cards apparently do exist in this format. All right, Outcaster Trailblazer, three mana for a four, two. You can plot it, ETB adds a mana of any color, and whenever you play something large, power four greater, you get to draw a card. I love this card. I really haven't been able to play with it enough, but I am gonna slam it. Even, I mean, I can even just play turn two Steed. This has a high saddle cost, right? So the fact that I can play this turn three, and saddle it right away is also awesome. So we are definitely green. What is our second color? To be determined. To be determined. All right. Still not seeing a ton of white in this pack. This is, again, a fairly weak pack. Now, blue is a pretty free splash here, given that we have three blue deserts. Um, don't want to play this Inventive Wingspit. So I could consider the Outlaw Stincher, but I could also just take Festering Gulch. Do I just take all the deserts here? Bristle Pack Sentry is also another option. I am light on playables, but you know, I'm going to just take this Festering Gulch. I'm just going to believe that I'm going to end up with enough playables, and uh, I'm going to get an Outcaster Greenblade here, and it's going to be awesome, okay? That's, that's the plan. And this is also setting us up, even if we end up in, like, let's say a black-green deck with maybe a light-white splash, I could also splash the blue, so... We, we currently don't have any desert payoff cards, I, I will throw that out there. No desert payoffs right now. And what do we have here? We have a mythic big score that is totally unplayable. There's another desert, but I don't think I want that. I'm going to slam Dance of the Tumbleweeds. I love this card. And uh, I will happily put it in my deck. 
And if our mana ends up being super good because we have all these deserts, I'm not opposed to playing the one copy of Bucolic Ranch, especially if I have a lot of um, acceleration. Like I have, if I have a Dancer to Tumbleweeds and Hard Bristle Bandits and such, I don't mind having the one ranch to search for as a late game way to basically surveil. Even if I don't have that many mounts, right? I have at least one, but certainly could look for Drover Grizzlies and such to uh, pick up enough mounts here. Wow, these packs are so bad. How many ringers are in my draft? Are these just all Ekans? What's going on here? I mean, I, I don't want to take... This is a mount. It's like Outlaw Medic or Ankle Biter? I guess I'll take Ankle Biter just because it's green and it's something to do early. Like, we don't know for sure if we're going to be white. But I'm just trying to figure out what my second color is. And we're not seeing blue cards either. Usually you see blue cards. All right. This ain't pretty, but we will try our best to make this work. Okay, well, this is... A <laughs> wow. This pack is loaded out of... We had a bunch of packs with absolutely nothing, and then we had this pack. There's a Drover Grizzly, but I do think it's significantly worse than the other cards. Like I said before, white didn't seem super open. I feel like I might still be more interested in black, green, splash, white. So I'm going to take Unfortunate Accident because I also am in the lookout for removal. I just feel like taking a Drover Grizzly here is just so much weaker than the Unfortunate Accident that I want to just take the black card here. This allows me to play the Ambush Gigapede, which is another four power creature that works with the Trailblazer. And I'm probably, honestly, given how light on playables we are, I'm also probably playing Fake Your Own Death. Here I'll just take Voracious Varmint as another two mana creature. And, uh, all right. Abzan maybe? All right, the Bristle Pack Sentry Table. Happy enough with that. I think I'd rather just take that than, I, I know the uh, Blue Splash is somewhat free, but I'd rather just have another two mana creature here. Now that we have the Outcaster Trailblazer, also just interested in picking up some more meat, meaty creatures here. We only have two creatures with power four or greater. I guess Dance of the Tumbleweeds also counts, right? Yeah, ETBs. So Dance of the Tumbleweeds also counts. Ooh, really happy about Patient Naturalist tabling. I'm not a big fan of Gold Rush, and I have enough deserts and I don't have any red cards, so very, very happy with Patient Naturalist here. And, yeah, this is where we are. I mean, I suppose there's still a world where we're just base green-white if we do end up getting a bunch of white cards in the next pack. But we're just kind of green with some good white cards and some mediocre black cards. And uh, we will still try to figure out what our second color should be. There's a Wanted Grifton. You know, maybe it should have just been the Drover Grizzly. I do have two sentries now, but... Too late for that now. All right, I still am in the market for removal here. Let's see what this pack offers us. Uh, there is a Consuming Ashes. There's also a Giant Beaver, which kind of keeps me in green and is a four power creature. But like I said, I am valuing removal very highly. So I will take the Consuming Ashes and now we can just lock ourselves into the black, the classic black, green, splash, white deck. Ooh, this is an interesting pack. A lot of great options. Rush of Dread, Hollow Marauder, and Badlands Revival. Huh. I don't have that much self-mill. I'm going to take Rush of Dread over Hollow Marauder. I do think they're both really good. But I'm going to take the Rush of Dread. I've been very impressed with this card. I think it's closer than it seems. I think they're both good. But I'll go with the Rush of Dread. I've just had this card be such a blowout in so many games that I want to take it here. And here I'll take Drover Grizzly over Forsaken Miner because I do have double Bristle Pack Sentry and Seraphic Steed to saddle. Granted, we're not really going to play turn 2 Seraphic Steed all that often. Move on. Here we have a pack with Abrupt Decay and the Giant Beaver. This is actually interesting. What's our removal looking like? I have a lot of twos, and <laughs> I'm actually going to make the pick that I think a lot of people might not make here. So I have four hard removal spells. I don't really care about being able to kill little things. It's really about being able to kill the big things, and Abrupt Decay doesn't necessarily do that. And so I'm going to take Giant Beaver. Several reasons. Four power creature matters for Seraphic Steed. Double Bristle Pack Sentry. I have an Outcaster Trailblazer that I'm also trying to leverage. I have a Bucolic Ranch that I'm also likely going to play. So more mount creatures are also valuable. So I think all those reasons combined, I'm going to take the Giant Beaver out of that pack. Wow, that's a late trained Erynx. But at this point, I'm just kind of locking myself into 
black, green, splash, white. Even though my black isn't that insane, I do have Rush of Dread, Consuming Ashes, and uh, Unfortunate Accident. So this is where we are. So Trained Erings on the Splash doesn't seem especially good. So I can take Oasis Gardener or Fierce Retribution. I will take... You know what? I'm going to take the Oasis Gardener. I don't actually hate this card. I think we don't have a ton of threes, and it does give us the mana fixing that we need to play the Seraphic Steed and some of our other white cards. So given that we're kind of light on playables, I will take the Oasis Gardener out of that pack. And, oh my gosh, now another Trained Erinx. I just felt like white wasn't that open in pack one. It's interesting. I don't want Boneyard Desecrator. This just seems weak on the splash. And like I said, I'm not really going to abandon my black anymore. It's just too late. I guess I'll take Rise of the Varmints. There is a world where maybe this ends up in my deck. I'll definitely play a second copy of Ambush Gigapede. Duelist of the Mind, seventh pick. Holy cow. Take a Conduit Pylons here. Ooh, Archive Trap, eighth pick. That's a thing. So I'm not really looking... I don't have any Crime Payoff cards or Desert Payoff. So I guess I don't really need the Soured Springs. Festering Gulch is great. I also don't need the Lush Oasis. If I have any blue card that I'd, ra that I'd want to splash, I'd play them. But I don't, so I won't. Um, there's a Decisive Denial, I guess. There's Vraska joins up. I don't think I would splash Decisive Denial. So I'm just going to take some gems. And seeing some, seeing various blue-red cards here that I'm not going to take. I, I sure hope I just get a semblance of a playable card here. In the uh, in this last, I I mean that counts. Is this better or worse than Oasis Gardener? Oh, that counts too, I guess. All right, we're gonna be uh, messing around with some cards here, folks, that I've never played with. This is this was definitely not the easiest draft to read, and uh, I'm gonna try to make the most of this and see what we can do. This is not you know the bomb laden decks that all of you are used to if you've been watching this channel. What I, I, what, and what I mean by that is, look at how insane this deck is. Like, I have to cut a card? Wow. I think I'm going to cut Gold Rush. I just think this card stinks. I'll play all my ramp just because I have Rush of Dread. So being able to play my ramp creatures into Rush of Dread for 8 is really, really strong, along with the double ambush Gigapede. We certainly don't need this many planes and definitely want more green sources. And I do think because of I have all this ramp and I have the Dance of the Tumbleweeds and I have, what, three mount creatures, I will play the Bucolic Ranch. I can probably afford to do so. So let's play, uh, here's nine green sources, um, probably cutting down to what, two planes? Two planes plus the Conduit Pylons and go down to four swamps, something like this. This gives us five black sources plus the Conduit Pylons, that's six. Dance of the Tumbleweeds is 7, Oasis Gardener is 8, uh, and then Ancient Cornucopia is also 9, and then Buried in the Garden, etc. So I think the most important thing is just having the green sources, and then we can just figure out the other colors later. So I think this is likely going to be fine. I mean, I have so much mana fixing, so just prioritizing the green is fine, and being a little bit heavier on the white isn't too bad, just so that we increase the chances of getting lucky and playing that Seraphic Steed. So let's try this. The perfect, imperfect Abzan deck. Playing a lot of cards I don't really like to play, but it is what it is. Look at this, rank 39 gamer. Give me your elo. And we have Rush of Dread at least, so that's a good card. Four lands, turn one Ankle Biter into Giant Beaver, Spinewoods Paladin, and Rush of Dread. So, Rush of Dread, one of the cards that's better if you're on the draw. As you, there's a higher chance of being able to hit, like, get a set up a board where your opponent has three creatures or whatever. Actually, I don't even know if that's correct. I'm just talking up. I'm just talking. All right, Patient Naturalist here. We hit the Rise of the Varmint, sadly. Although, I guess there's no creatures in our yard. It's okay, got us a land. We can't be too upset. Next turn, we're going to be able to attack for a lot, depending on what they do. They are Grixis. They just played a Boneyard Desecrator, which is quite nice on this board. 
I'll go ahead and just play a giant beaver, and I can still attack with the ankle biter. Like, I welcome this trade if they want to make that trade, but I don't think so. And look, hey, look, it was a lava spike that uh, might trade with something later. I think there's a pretty good chance this beaver is going to die here. Um, with Rush of Dread, I kind of want to hold off for as long as I can. We'll see what our opponent chooses to, chooses to do here. Grixis Boneyard Desecrator. I imagine their deck also didn't go ideally, would be my guess. So they played absolutely nothing. That's not sus at all. All right, let's play the uh, Spinewoods Paladin, see what they do. All right, they have to have some kind of a trick here. I feel. Maybe it's just a removal spell for the beaver, honestly. Oh, it's a bounce spell? Oh my gosh. That's like the best... Like, that's something I don't mind at all, right? They had to... They bounced the beaver. So we can Rush of Dread for 6 here. But they do have mana available. I suppose we can wait. Holy cow, what do you have? Alright, here's my beaver. And here's my bristle pack. I mean, next turn we're just gonna Rush of Dread, no matter what. Let's see what they do. They might have their own Rush of Dread, actually, funny enough. That is very possible. But if they do, they die. If they just Rush of Dread and make us sack three creatures, I can sack Inklebiter, Patient Naturalist, and Bristle Pack Sentry. And then I make them sacrifice their Boneyard Desecrator and lose five. They played nothing so far. What is happening? What are you up to over there? I just want them to tap out to play. Oh, okay, it's over. <laughs> All right, here we go. Um, sack a creature and lose half your life. Can you imagine if they commandeered me here? Wow, this deck did not go well. I'm just looking at their cards. All right, Diamond 2. Let's keep it going. But, I mean, to be fair, our deck also didn't go that well. So, I think we're kind of getting to... What is this now? Week 3? Maybe end of Week 2? Week 3? We're getting to the point where people have figured this format out. So, those busted, ridiculous, streamlined mount decks that you have seen saw in Week 1... You're not going to see as often anymore. You're going to see a lot of kind of three color piles because everybody recognizes what's good. And so it's just going to be a lot harder to get things. Kind of, do you remember week one or week two of Murders at Karlov Manor? Every good player you played against just had this ridiculous, unstoppable Boros deck. And I mean, that's kind of like, that was my experience in the first couple weeks. Everybody's green deck was just ridiculous. And now things are balancing out. People know what's up. So uh, you have to try to get your edges in other ways now. Interesting hand. Uh, my hand does absolutely nothing, but I have a lot of new cards. <laughs> I have a Bucolic Ranch. I have an Ancient Cornucopia, a Dance of the Tumbleweeds. All right. I got to read this again. When you cast a spell, that's one or more. So anytime you cast a spell, you basically gain one life. That's what this more or less does. Dance of the Varmints doesn't do anything. Oh my, why? Okay, it's okay. You know what this hand has? Hope. It has hope. I assume I Cornucopia in that Dance of the Tumbleweeds, because that gets me pretty close to just being able to kick this. Or, sp sorry, Spree this. I'm not going to lie, I like I feel like I never beat Demir decks. I got to see what my win rate is against Demir decks, but I feel like the Demir Crime decks always just go over the top of anything I'm trying to do. I mean, this Sentry is not really attacking, so I think I just want to develop my board. All right, sure. I feel humiliated just them looking at my hand. All right. Um. All right. 
Just using our mana. I mean, this Rise of the Varmints, it's on layaway for a very, very long time. Jace reawakened? Maybe they were in our draft. I kind of... Jace would be nice here. Maybe I should have taken it. To draft, like, the crime deck. They're going to be, like, 17 colors with just 87 removal spells. You know, the usual. I think I just kind of... Oh, wait, no. I can play this, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, perfect. Okay, so let's... I can actually play this. Gain Look at this. We're going off. Green. Activate Bucolic Ranch. Take action. Scry land to the bottom. Attack Jace. Wow. What a turn. Okay, I mean, it was something. There, I mean, this thing's probably going to die, but... It, it wasn't nothing. Oh, they plotted something. Okay, so they didn't want to loot. Alright. If they just kill my uh, Trailblazer, though, then I'm kind of just... Back to ground zero here. Oh my gosh! Fractured Identity? Fractured Identity? I can't even make a squirrel! Oh my gosh. There's just Esper Rares over there? I do not want that card. Hey, look at us gain our life, though. Could use a black source. So I can cast my Consuming Ashes. We are, play we are pretty heavy on the green, and we are playing this ranch, but... I still felt like we had enough land search. The thing is, they got the Dance of the Tumbleweeds. Archangel of Tithes? Okay, so... Raven of Fell Omens, Jace Archangel. What what is the what colors are you? Oh, it just it deeply saddens me. All right, let's attack Jace. Here's the question. Do I kill a raven or do I kill the sterling keykeeper? Does it kill planeswalkers? It does not. Maybe I just kill neither for now. Yeah, I'll just kill neither and just keep up the ranch. I just, the thing is, I'm not putting enough pressure right now, which is kind of rough. They discarded consuming ash. I'm so dead. I am so dead. Wait, they kept the Raven of Fell Omens over Consuming Ashes? Okay, I'm gonna kill the Raven. Four, five, six, we have seven mana? I don't think I want the Oasis Gardener. Obviously, I want the Rush of Dread. This isn't even that good right now. <laughs> uh, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna wait till I hit eight mana. The question is, is it even worth doing it next turn? I'm still gonna bottom this, but I will play the um, Rise of the Varmints here. I mean, two one body is not bad on this board, right? The reason why I bottomed this is if I draw a spell, that's fine, right? But if I go land, land, that's horrible. So they didn't want to loot. What are they on, 22 cards? Oh, man. 1-3, my only weakness. Okay. Are they going to tap something? I got to think here. Jace is on five.
I kind of want to kill the Tapper. Because it commits a crime for them. And then attack with the Bristle Pack Sentry. I don't know why they didn't tap my- oh, well, I guess they didn't know that I had the Ambush Gigapede, right? Alright, Ambush Gigapede was certainly a good draw. Bandit's Hall into... Probably wanted to loot first. Before playing out the Bandit's Hall. But I can't imagine they discard this, I guess. Phantom Interference gone. That's good to see. Raven of Fell Omens. Okay. So, Allo Alchemist. That is pretty interesting. This is a 5-3 Trampler. Do I attack with Bristle Pack Sentry as well? Do I just... Alright. <laughs> Chase down! <laughs> uh, I'll chump the Nimble Brigand here, I guess. I could have not attacked with Bristle Pack Sentry, I guess. That was the other consideration. Rakdos the Muscle? Uh-oh. Oh my gosh. Okay, now I want to land. I'm just going to do all the things. Oh my gosh. They're going to keep Rakdos. I'm just going to just going to go out on a limb here. Just going to throw it out there. Wait, they're sacking things? Okay, well now you still have to discard two cards. Well, you still- wait. Okay. Oh, are they decking me here? Oh, wow! That's actually insane! But they're at one! Okay, hold on. I got a I got a full control here. I might need a this might be an upkeep bucolic ranch. They have to cast all these spells though, right? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So they have eight mana. So buried in the garden into Spinewood's Paladin is probably best here. Yeah. Okay, and then th these are all gone, right? Until until your next end step, okay? And they're not gonna attack us. Okay, I have 15 cards left in my deck. Whew, all right. Um, take action, draw. So they would not die. I guess I play the patient naturalist. Okay, that was a Seraphic Steed. Alright. Close... Ha Holy cow, they're sacking this? And... They oh my gosh, look at what they hit. This is so disgusting. Rakdos is so good! Oh my gosh. Alright, Mystical Tether. Sure. And unfortunate accident? Oh my gosh. Can they play the land? I don't think so. Okay. I have six cards left in my library. Oh my gosh. Okay, so it's like the top two cards.
I don't even know what this can be. Actually, hold on. Ambush Gigapede, that's one Ambush Gigapede. I have two in my deck. So one of these cards is an Ambush Gigapede. I don't know what the other card is. So they can mill my top three cards if I keep on top. I'm just going to naturally draw. All right. That's an Ambush Gigapede. Oh my gosh. Uh... What do I shrink? Is it Rakdos the Muscle? Man. A most ambitious mana base defeated us. I don't think we have what it takes to kill them here. We have two lands left. Oh, and they hit a Bristle Pack Sentry? Yeah. All right. All right. I got decked by Rack. <laughs> Cause of death. Decking by Rakdos. I am once again 0 and 47 against whatever colors my opponents was attempting to play. Yeah, we just needed to find a way to kill the Rakdos, but just did not have anything. Planes? No? Okay. Alright, so we have Cornucopia. And the Trailblazer. I can plot this. That'll give me a mana next turn. So it's kind of like playing a Cornucopia. But gives me upside for more. Alright. I mean, I could also have played it, but... I like um, keeping it safe for now. Gila Corsair. So if we play this, we have access to five mana. I don't really like the idea of them getting value off of this, but I suppose I can just go Cornucopia into uh, Bristle Pack Sentry. Actually, no, I can go Cornucopia into Seraphic Steed, right? Does this make me gain two life? Yeah! Let's go. Yeah, and I'm actually going to save this. This actually works out perfectly. Next turn, I can go Outcaster Trailblazer, get mana number 6, dance to the Tumbleweeds for the fully spreed cost, and draw a card. So that seems really nice. Here, I mean, they can get value here if they do kill my steed, but it looks like they didn't. So my creature has first strike, which is great. So I am definitely loving this situation here. Uh, can't kick the kill the Cactus Folk Sure Shot unless I use Consuming Ashes. Actually, is that what I want to do? Hold on. Hold on. Because I can use... I can play this. Use Consuming Ashes to kill Cactus Folk Sure Shot. Saddle this and attack. And they, they don't really have... This thing has First Strike. I feel like I should try to get value off of this when I can. Nice. I mean, I got a free angel out of the deal, right? I don't get a card, but it's like, do I want a card or do I want an angel? Right? And now they have a tough decision. They don't know whether or not they should be killing the steed or the trailblazer here. No blocks. If they want to crew up every turn, I mean, we're, we're going to be destroying them in the race. If, we, if it gets to a race situation here, so... <sighs> this is interesting, though. They can put... No, they can't put two creatures into play. I got to think about what I want to do. I think I just need to make... I can't kick this. I just got to make a 4-4. Four -four.
I mean, alternatively, I can uh, just play these two. Maybe that's better. I can play Bristle Pack Sentry and Ankle Biter and then saddle that up and then attack. Okay, never mind. <laughs> they, they didn't have a removal spell, so I guess it didn't matter. I get it. I played a Ridiculous Rare that could not be dealt with, and, uh, you know, we lost to Rakdos. It is the nature of the beast of this format. You don't have the removal spell for your opponent's bombs, you're probably gonna die. Okay, two and one with our, uh, special brew, I'm gonna say. You know, I, I'm pro- I think I'm gonna- in this instance, I really wanna find a green source turn too, so I might go ahead and just- never mind, I just- I just drew the forest. Yeah, just ignore- ignore everything I said. Hard Bristle Bandit, okay. Now I don't need mana, so I guess I can go ahead and just go Conduit Pylons. And just bottom anything that's not a- hmm... I don't actually don't want this- I actually don't want that card. Alright. Let's pump this. I just no, don't need more mana here, right? Like, this is a decent value creature, but I'd just rather have a shot at drawing one of my more powerful cards. Like, next turn I'm playing the Cornucopia here anyways. So, Ambush Gigapede, Rush of Dread, cards of that nature. Kellen the Kid! It's a good one. It's a flying life linker. What does it say? When you cast a spell from anywhere other than your hand. So when you cast a plotted spell, you can play a cheaper card for free. Okay, got it. All right, let's play Cornucopia into the Alchemist. Gain a life. How do we take damage? Oh, one and then one here, sure. All right, we do have Consuming Ashes here for Kel and the Kid, which is quite nice. Um, the nice thing is this is a great three. Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? What world are we living in here? Just magical Christmas land? Throw from the lasso. My Aloe Alchemist is definitely getting lassoed and they're going to go up to 70 million life. Oh my god, I need so I need two removal spells. Magic the Gathering. What do I do? do I, I feel like I need to kill the flyer. They only have two cards left. I don't know. I mean, the flyer is just going to kill me. So, I, I, yeah, I do... I do feel like I need to do this on the flyer. Let's find more removal here. Guess I'll keep that. I mean, if they don't pump Bristly Bill... Okay, they pumped Bristly Bill. If they don't have a Bite spell... Uh, I, I'm just working with a bunch of what-ifs here, alright? There's just a bunch of what-ifs. Prosperity Tycoon, okay. I don't think I can afford to plot the Outcaster Trailblazer. This seems like a pretty important turn to play the Ambush Gigapede. This forces them to sacrifice the token. And then we can play Ambush Gigapede. Oh, come on! You're green-white, you don't have a counter spell here. You could have a combat trick. Alright. Bristly Bill, Kellen, Miriam, oh my gosh. Do they have power? That's my question. Do, do you think that they have power, powerful cards in their deck? All right, let's, uh, it's okay. We have a giant beaver. It's the same thing. Um, Humph?
I mean, it hits for six. What? What, what is this? Oh my gosh. All right, well, you know, honestly, Fierce Retribution would have been great, like, as just a kill anything at this point, so. Oh my goodness. So, Bristly Bill is technically a 4 4. This Inkle Biter is actually doing a good amount of work. It's buying us some time here, at least. I wonder if I should be upkeep, upkeep ranching. Gosh. Yeah, I probably should. I really need to find a removal spell, so. Oh, each creature! Oh my goodness. This is not reasonable. This is not reasonable at all. Alright, um... Take action, let's put that on the bottom. Into a removal spell. Can we get rewarded for our sequencing just once? Is it worth attacking with the beaver? It's got vigilance. What are they gonna do, block with one of their creatures that have counters on them? This is so ridiculous, by the way. We only drew one removal spell. We need another one. We're on full control here. Congregation Griff. Okay. That gets counters too? Because of Miriam? Brutal. Oh, they can't double their counters though. I actually don't know if that was worth it. Right? Because it costs five mana. So it's like, do you want four plus one plus one counters? Or a Congregation Griff. I think it's close. Okay, so we went land, land. Now this is land number three. Let's take action. Rush of Dread. Wow, okay. That is certainly interesting. So I can make them sacrifice two creatures, which is not bad on this board. I don't really care about dealing damage to them, right? Yeah, this is rough. Um, hold on. I can attack with just both my big creatures. I don't think they're going to block either. The thing is, this is only bad if they block with both of their big creatures. Otherwise, I get, you know, if they trump with their small creature, it's really good for me. Because then I get to kill two, one of their big creatures. Yeah, this was very good for us. So three, four. I mean, I'm just going to play it. All right, target opponent sacrifices half the creatures they control around it up. All right, sack two things. They're going to sack the two creatures on the right, most likely. They have a bristly bill. We have an ankle biter. Okay. All right. Bristly bill is huge. But remember, I do have this ankle biter. This is going to be uh, an 8 8. Let's continue utilizing our bucolic ranch here. We have the cornucopia, so we have all the colors we need. Can we just reveal a mount? That would be sweet value. All right, we're putting the land on the bottom. Okay, draw. Okay, it's, it's a magic card. So we can't attack anymore. All right, well, they, like I said, they have a ginormous bristly bill. I think it was worth it to cast it there. I thought there was gonna be a chance at a snowball turn next turn. So I know we didn't get to deal a bunch of damage to them. But all we really need to do here is find an answer for this Bristly Bill. And we do have answers. We have a good number of removal, and we haven't found all of them, right? We have Buried in the Garden, another Consuming Ashes, etc. They Now, uh, it's going to be a 14-14. <laughs> okay. 14-14. But we have all the mana in the world. And look, we've, we've scried three lands at the bottom. So the ranch has definitely uh, proven its worth here. 
Can we hit a four power creature? Mount? Removal spell? Removal spell would just almost lock up the game. All right, we'll put it on the bottom. Oh, there it is! There it is! We found Unfortunate Accident. Man, I'm just gonna give a big, big shout out to my MVP, Bucolic Ranch, AKA Demonic Tutor. Uh, see you later, Bill. It was nice knowing ya. Wow, they didn't even crew the mobile homestead. I thought that was going to happen for sure. All right, wait. Well, let's still we still got to keep it tight here. Still got the upkeep ranch that we need to do. Ariot's lullaby off the top for the opponent, okay? They can't crew the mobile homestead. Oh wait, they're just dead, right? Just, we have we just have lethal. Oh, we even get value there. Yes, bucolic ranch, getting it done. All right, we beat Bristly Bill into Kid. Wow. That was awesome. I did not think we were going to win that one. Whew. That one got could almost almost got out of hand. But that scrying to find the rush of dread. Um, you know, honestly, the the really pivotal turn there, like everything was fine, was my opponent's decision to chomp with the hard bristle bandit, right? Because if they didn't chomp with the hard bristle bandit, then they would be able to sack the hard bristle bandit and the congregation griff, leading them leaving them with two giant creatures in play. All right, we are on the play here with a couple of white spells. Hopefully we find our mana. I'm pretty confident in our mana though. We do have lots of fixing. We have the Cornucopia, the Oasis Gardener, um, the uh, Dance in the Tumbleweeds card. We have a couple of planes. Right now, the only card we can cast is this Drover Grizzly that we have on turn three though. Turn two, Mobile Homestead from the opponent. And we did find a Conduit Pylon. So that is technically our white source. Uh, giant beaver I'll keep I just think it's I mean it's just a it's just a perfect four mana play here and now like any land I draw after the beaver is good right because that allows me to play my Baron in the garden or consuming ashes don't hit okay I'm just gonna block I don't want them to get value here off this lookout. Okay, Wanted Griffin is okay. And let's play the beaver now. So yeah, any land allows us to play Baird in the Garden or Consuming Ashes. Like I said, I do like having this beaver around. Leave it to beaver. That might be far too old of a reference for anybody here to remotely understand. I understand this. The question here is this, do I want to cast Dance of the Tumbleweeds to ensure that I get the mana that I need? I can probably, I, honestly, I can get the Bucolic Ranch here because I have the Conduit Pylons. It turns everything a little bit awkward. Alternatively, I can just try to wait because if I draw a land, if I draw a land, then I can play Buried in the Garden, which then will give me the mana to kick my Dance of the Tumbleweeds. And I do think that's kind of worth. So I'll give it a turn. I do have Fake Your Own Death as well uh, as a nice combat trick if they try to use a combat trick to attack with their trained Erynx. Ooh, a mountain. Green, white, splashing red. I'm immediately thinking Annie Duke. But we'll see. Or is it Annie Flash? Annie Duke is a poker player. <laughs> Annie Flash, I think? I don't remember the name. The six mana Flash thing. The really powerful thing. What is this? Irascible Wolverine. 
that is something I would not have expected, I'm not gonna lie. Like a green white deck splashing the Wolverine is a little bit a little bit interesting, I'm just gonna say. Alright, we drew naturally drew plane, so that is amazing for us. Let's attack. Okay, happy enough with that. Now the question is, do I use Buried in the Garden here? And I think, honestly, the answer is yes. Uh, primarily because... Primarily because I, I also am valuing the mana that I get from this. And this is why this card is so much better than Consuming Ashes or any of the other removal spells you can think of. Is um, Oh, they have a Snakeskin Veil. Is just the fact that this gives you this generates you mana. Could also be Getaway Glamour. No, well... I mean, if, if they just blink that, that's that's fine, I guess. Nope. Alright. They might want to just kill my beaver. But yeah, next turn we have access to 6 mana, which allows us to Tumbleweeds for a monster. They hit a Prickly Pear. Okay. I imagine they're going to want to cast that. They could still use the Glamour here if they want to, like, blink their um, Prickly Pear and kill my Beaver, I guess. Interesting. I'm happy with the two-for-one trade here, so I'll just attack. And I suppose it's time to uh, make a big uh, token here. Let's get the Bucolic Ranch. We have a lot of mana, right? This is an instance where I won't upkeep Ranch just because I have things to do. So I'd rather just be able to naturally draw some big things and then use this when I don't have anything else to do with my mana. Like, we're still in the phase where I'm trying to develop my board. And locking up four mana on my upkeep is a lot. Is this the time to use your getaway glamour? Fake your own death does not work against the 7-7 seven, seven token, sadly. If they have it, it's a really good time to use it now. I feel like 50%, 50-50, they have a glamour here. Just do it before I snakeskin veil, obviously. All right. So th they have a land in their hand, and they value rummaging over getting a 1-1, one -one, it seems. Yep. Alright. I will certainly keep Ambush Gigapede. I guess, given that I have this, I can take 4 this turn. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. God, I'm going to take so much damage, though. I think it's worth. Don't have something. Come on. Come on, buddy. That is such a beating. Oh my gosh. Ay ay ay. That's such a beating. I feel like I was behind enough where I just kind of had to go for that, but Well, Ambush Gigapede, definitely very good here. Okay. I think we're I think we're still okay. Alright, we're good. <laughs> okay. They got flooded. They got flooded. Oh my gosh, they did not get flooded. Oh my gosh, hold on. They most definitely did not get flooded. 
Wow. I mean, attacking with this Gigapede doesn't do much. I'd rather just make another 3-3 flyer. Oh, you know what I should have done? I should have played this uh, Patient Naturalist first. Because I'm going to uh, surveil off of this. But, uh, you know, maybe I let the Seraphic Steed die. Like, I I'm not really sure how they're going to block here. Oh, they just took everything? All right, this, this is fine. All right. Patient Naturalist. Oh, Rush of Dread down. But they don't have a lethal attack here. We're at 9 life. We have two lethal flyers. So, alright, got it done. Whew, that was close. That explosive derailment almost uh, derailed that turn. <laughs> okay, I'll edit that out. I'm gonna edit that one out. That one was, that one was really bad. Alright. Man, that Seraphic Steed card. Heck of a magic card, isn't it? Alright, let's take a look at our opener here. Two forests and a swamp with a rush of dread. Bristle Pack Sentry, Baird in the Garden, and Giant Beaver. Uh, definitely keeping this. Any Swamp allows us to cash rush of, cast, ha, rush of Dread here. Finding a Plains here allows us to cast Baird in the Garden. And then, of course, any Land allows us to cast the Beaver. It's the biggest Beaver ever. I mean, it is a giant Beaver, I guess. Can you imagine this thing just start taking chunks out of your house? What are you going to do about it? It's a freaking 4-4. What are you, at? a 1-2 at best? I don't care how jacked you are. Alright. Anyways, this is just me waiting on my opponent. Ooh, Dinosaur Land. Alright. Black White from the opponent. Turn 2 Desperate Bloodseeker. Likely targeting themselves. Milled a Mourner Surprise. Oh, they are the best color combination. They are Abzan. They hit a Forest. I'm gonna go ahead and play the Bristle Pack Sentry. 3-3 three, three is bigger than 2-2. Two, two. My eyes just keep going over to this, to this Godzilla Land. Good job, Lars. What kind of skullduggery is this? Oh. Happily trade with the deserts, do. Here I thought it was a skullduggery. All right. We have Giant Beaver here. We drew another white card in the Seraphic Steed, so we'd really like to draw one of our mana fixing cards. Alright, traded our Varmint for their Bloodseeker. Prosperous Tycoon. Okay, really need a white source. No white source. Fake your own death. Alright, Prosperity Tycoon is basically a 4-2 unblockable right now. If I draw a white source, then I can go... Uh, Buried in the garden here. If I draw Dance of the Tumbleweeds or the Cornucopia, I can just play the Seraphic Steed. Swamp allows us to cast Rush of Dread. Forest is the uh, worst possible draw. Let us attack for four. Destroy target attacking creature? What is this? Fierce Retribution. All right, let's fake our own death. Beaver back with the treasure. And we get buried in the garden here. And we get the uh, Prosperity Tycoon. And that gives us the white mana for a Seraphic Steed and the ramp effect on Rush of Dread. So, again, this is why buried in the garden is insane. The mana that you get from it is not irrelevant. In fact, it's extremely relevant. Rictus Robber and nothing. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's go at... Ooh, ooh, actually, I can over... I can over saddle. I mean, they probably have a kill spell for the Steed. But let's do it anyways. So 
So one, two, three, four, we, we can rush of dread for... Oh, so the nice thing about that, now they get to surveil, is um, they don't actually get a 2-2 two -two here with the Rictus Robber. As it's an exile effect. Although this Rush of Dread's looking kind of mediocre, so I'm just not even that interested in it. I think I'm going to just dance to the Tumbleweeds here for... This is why dance is so good, by the way. It's like, oh, I drew it in the late game? Sure. I'll go get a Bucolic Ranch and uh, make a 7-7. Seven -seven. Don't mind if I do. I just feel like long... I mean, I could have gotten the Surveil Land too, but I just... This feels like it's a better... Better thing to do long term. Ooh, Dust Animus. And Trained Erinx. Okay. Get in there, 6-6. Six, six. Kind of want... I was kind of hoping this 1-1 one, one would chump. It did not. Land? Hmm. I'm just gonna... I just want to do this for everything. Oh, we got buried in the garden. Wow. And let's settle this. All right. Rush of Dread. Very powerful Magic the Gathering card. <laughs> Getting it done for us once again. All right. Let's full control this because we have Bucolic Ranch and plenty of mana now. Bridled Bighorn is a chump on my 6-6. We can try to find a removal spell here. Take action. Draw a card. Okay. They go to two. And I will play this. And we will pass. Man, that Rush of Dread had just been so good every single game. So unless they have a sweeper here, we are golden. Does Ambush Gigapede get it done? Even Gigapede doesn't get it done. Oh my gosh, they actually drew Wrath. Are you kidding me? What? The, the turn they needed it? Okay. Woo. <laughs> if I lost this game, man, that would have been a tilter. Okay, one win away from Diamond 1, the climb continues. Excuse me, two wins away from Diamond 1. Okay, let's take a look at the sand. Hey, we have the combo, Patient Naturalist plus Rise of the Varmints. And Ankle Biter, which will happily get in the way of anything. So I think this is a pretty good um, Rise of the Varmints hand. We have all the colors. I guess we don't have double black, but turn one ankle biter, turn two bristle pack sentry, setting up for the late game here. Then let's go ahead and play the bristle pack. Forsaken miner, not a good blocker. Ooh, and they missed a land drop. Unfortunately, we can't make them. Pu we can't punish them because we don't have any four power creatures here. No. We milled our four power creature. Oh man. I will say though, actually, can I really complain? Am I allowed to complain? I just rise of the varmints for for three? I 
I'm just I'm just wondering if they have a counter spell. Should I play around it? Hmm. I guess I shouldn't have. I have Mystical Tether up this way plus Rise of the Varmints. Just kind of using my mana the best that I can. I don't mind if they actually kill this because then I can play this for more. Oh, I see. It was quote-unquote free for them. Alright, Rise of the Varmints. Black land, and let's go. If they kill a 2-3, I mean, they still just die, right? So unless they have caught in the crossfire, which basically nobody plays, I think we're pretty safe. Oh, Rush of Dread as well, I guess, would be very good. But... We picked up a free win and Diamond 1. Ooh, look at how pretty that is. Hopefully we're not Diamond 1 for too long. And by that I mean, let's go hit some Mythic. But not in this video. Not in this video. But Diamond 1 here. Mythic on the horizon. And then Rank 1? Rank 20? We'll see. All right. You know, I, I don't like to mulligan, but the double swamp... The double swamp hand I'll ship. We'll, we'll ship that one. I'll be reasonable here, okay? I'll keep this one. We're on the draw here. We do have four Swamp Planes with a two, a three, and a four. Hopefully I draw like another two instead of the Aloe Alchemist. Although, th th that's a question though. Like for the Aloe Alchemist, I imagine you just play this on turn two if you can. I guess it depends on what they play as well. Ooh. Oh, this Trailblazer is going to be amazing. Yeah, I just don't want to get run over, and this is also kind of a beater. Oh, um, hmm. I think I'm supposed to play this. Let me know what you think about that. Oh my gosh, never mind. They played a... A Kambal. I should have held it. Why didn't anybody tell me to hold this? I don't understand. So rude. I do have lots of removal, so I mean, this should be okay. Feels like a consuming ashes or whatever. Karavik the Punisher, okay. So let's play this into whatever green mana let's play a beaver i'm gonna do this now because i might draw a desert here nope rise of the varmints is the draw and let's attack and we have another play here if they don't kill the trailblazer we can play the um the drover grizzly Nice start here, though. Pair of rares here for this nice Orzov deck. They're gonna come... No, they're probably gonna target themselves. They want to fill up their graveyards to be able to play a spell they can... Oh my gosh, they hit... De oh. They hit Desert's do. So if they can find a Desert here... If they hit me with a Desert and then cast Desert's do, that would be pretty savage. Fortunately, they did not. I don't think I have a cheap white spell here. Oh no, I do have Seraphic Steed, but I do have the Bucolic Ranch. So we'll do something like this. And we drew a an ambush gigapede. Uh, I don't know if there's an attack I like here. Um with two mana up as well. I think I'm just going to pass. We're definitely getting a lot of value here off the Outcaster Trailblazer. But they also have this Karavik in play. Next turn, I am much more inclined to attack. Particularly with the Beaver. And then keep up the Ambush Gigapede. But we will see what they do. I think for them, the top priority is to kill this Outcaster Trailblazer. And it does look like that's what they're doing. At least they can't commit a crime here. I really need to get that Karavik off the battlefield. If I can. 
You can't... Did they exit? Huh? Okay. I think they thought they got to cast it for free. Which is not the case. Not the case at all. Alright, they kept a card on top. It was an exile removal spell though, so I don't get some value here, sadly. Ooh, that's really interesting too. Buried in the garden. Hmm. Well, certainly don't want to attack with my X2s right now because I have these. But I will pump my Aloe Alchemist because it's a natural trampler. See what they do. Wow, Rise of the Varmints is terrible with Cambal in play, isn't it? All right. Well, that was a really nice combat phase for us. <laughs> I'm just going to say. My professional opinion there. Uh, hopefully, uh, and they also exiled some stuff, but I do want to get this off the battlefield. Ruthless Lawbringer, they're going to have to sack the Kervik, though. You can't sack the Ruthless Lawbringer. Does this trigger it, though? How do... I I'm curious how this timing works. I think we're going to find out, though. Never mind, they just didn't do anything. Like, I was like, how does the timing work if you sack the Kervik? And to the... I, I, do you... I th do you get the trigger? YouTube, tell me. Tell me what happens there. Oh no, I messed up! Oh my gosh! Oh my bad. I'm I'm really oh I'm so I'm that that was horrible. Yep, 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 yep. Everybody saw it, right? Everybody knew what I should have done. I think it's more important to just ping them here, so let's just do that. Then surveil. Oh I should have saddled my I should have played the naturalist and saddled it. That would have dealt four more damage. That would have dealt four more damage. But I, I don't think it's going to matter. Fortunately. Alright! And there we have it! Another trophy! Back to our winning ways! Oh, it feels so good. We've had a few rough drafts recently where we, we, we tinkered. We did things for science. And then we went back to our roots. And what is our roots? A scuffed Abzan deck. But even a scuffed Abzan deck is still an Abzan deck. And of course, Abzan is, as we all know, the GOAT color combination here. So let's take a look at our deck and see what is the reason why this deck ended up working. Well, number one, Seraphic Steed. Even on the splash, this card won us several games. Just the thing is, think about it this way. Yeah, there are going to be instances where your opponents just have a bigger creature, but even then... You get to gain two life and you get a 3-3 flyer. But if there's ever an instance, if you can clear the board and you have this in play, right? And you get multiple attacks, the game is just over. So obviously the Steed is insane. The Outcaster Trailblazer also did some work, right? There were instances where you plotted this and I just was able to use the mana from this very well as well. And then we had, you know, like six targets to draw cards off of, which was nice. Three, uh, four good removal spells and Rush of Dread, which is fantastic with all the ramp that we had. This card definitely gets much, much better the more ramp effects that you have. Because when you can do this for six or eight, it's just that much better. And then even the Rise of Armaments did some work. Um, just because we were pretty creature heavy. Uh, definitely on the worst end of what uh, of Rise of the Varmints that can be. Just because we didn't have that much self mill. But I mean... It was still fine as kind of our 23rd card, and Ambush Gigapi just continues to impress. There's tons of just two toughness creatures in the format, so you always just get something, and then you usually can use this to trade with a big green creature. So, very, very happy with Ambush Gigapede. And a special shout out to the ranch. Okay? When, you're ha when you have a deck, I, I like ranch in two decks, okay? Number one, greet the green white mount deck, obviously, right? You're just gonna have like six or seven targets, it's gonna be great there. And then in just, if you're playing a green deck that has maybe a couple of mounts, but also just no shortage of mana, we had 17 lands with 
with Patient Naturalist, Oasis Gardener, Dance of the Tumbleweeds, and Ancient Cornucopia. So 21 mana sources and Buried in the Garden. If you're playing these mid-range decks where the games go long and you're digging and you're looking for threats and you have the ability to scry every turn, it's got, it gives you value. And the fact that we had Dance of the Tumbleweeds and used it to search for it often um, just proved to be very valuable. So if your mana is good enough, remember, you can't don't just play this in your four-color deck where your mana sucks, right? But if your mana is reasonably good and you have the fixing and you have a way to fetch for this ranch, I think it's a perfectly fine card to play as a one-of, as a late-game way to smooth out your draws. And here you have it. Abzan, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Abzan continues to overperform by giving us another trophy. And now we are Diamond 1 and one step closer to hitting Mythic. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Feel free to hit the like or subscribe button for more daily videos just like this. If you've enjoyed the content and wanted to support the channel in another way, I do have a Patreon. The link to the Patreon is in the description below. The big thing that you're going to get by have, being a patron at any level is you get access to the Discord, which I just think is gonna be the single largest value add if you are looking to improve your game. I am extremely active in that Discord. Now, like I said before, I don't really do a lot of coaching, but honestly, I am so active in that Discord. It's almost like free coaching. Well, not free, but very cheap coaching, I guess. Just get in that Discord, figure out what you need to cut for your deck, figure out if you want people to go over your draft logs. I'm super active, so definitely check, uh, take a look there. Once again, the link is in the description below. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you tomorrow.